So you just use the arrows. Hello, good morning. Welcome and uh, um, for the uh, telecom uh, and free session. And uh, Tim and I will um, give a brief overview about the uh, service function chaining and technology analysis. And uh, Tim will give the um, and demonstration about the uh, uh, what's been developed and uh, achieved in the NSC project in the OpenMV. So let's get it started. And I'm Bim from AT&T, and the team is from uh, Red Hat. So, um, so we will talk about a little bit in from technology perspective, different approaches to implement the uh, SFC, and including the uh, MPS GP, BGP VPN approach and the uh, NSH approach. And uh, followed by that, Tim will give a demonstration, and then we'll give uh, uh, some summary about the different projects that's been worked on in the uh, OpenStack, OpenDaylight, and OpenMV, and also some key takeaways from uh, those analysis and uh, implementation. Okay. Um, so let's start with some key concepts. And uh, um, so those key concepts apply to uh, both the different implementation uh, approaches and including the um, classifications. And the basic classification is policy-based, the uh, function to identify, um, select, and uh, um, match the different traffic flows and uh, with a specific service function, the chain and the requirement. So the uh, classifier is uh, specific for the different uh, service provider policies and, uh, um, and customer policies that's needed for uh, constructing um, the service chains. And uh, another concept is called service function chain, also, the, uh, also known as a service chain. Okay, and so itself is an ordered list of the services functions and especially those virtualized the network functions and uh, the ordering constraints based on the policy and uh, that must be applied uh, in order to the, uh, to, to the different packets and uh, um, different frames which are selected and as a result of the classification function. Okay, so, the, uh, so basically that's a traffic flow and uh, um, go through different functions. And uh, so it's the chain itself, it can be as simple as a linear chain or as complex as a service graph. And uh, um, there's a project in the uh, uh, OPMV that's dealing with the uh, uh, VNF uh, graph based service function chain that's led by uh, Kathy here. And uh, um, the third key concept is called the uh, service function forward, and which based on the different approaches, it could be implemented as a virtual router, the virtual routing and the forwarding function, or the service function forward. And which basically the function is to forward the traffic and to one or more um, connected service functions and transport the traffic flow to another service function or another um, uh, 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 virtual routers. And also at the end, it terminates the service function chain and uh, go to the normal uh, traffic flow. Um, so as I mentioned, there are primarily there are two different approaches in order to implement the service function chains. And uh, um, so one approach is based on layer three and uh, using the, uh, uh, um, the current network functions and uh, which based on MPLS and BGP um, um, protocols and uh, which already been deployed in the uh, existing the, uh, network infrastructure. And uh, so in this approach, and we're using IPVPM, which is based on the level three, so uh, it's used as overlay uh, encapsulation method and for routing and for traffic uh, flow over the, uh, so over the whole the service function chain topologies and uh, all the different VMs and attach it to the L3 VPN. And uh, there is a controller that manages the uh, service topology and instantiation of different service functions and, uh, uh, in the chain and also create the virtual routers and uh, uh, configure the virtual router, the, uh, uh, the routing table and, uh, um, and the uh, egress, ingress, the uh, VRFs and uh, um, install the different routes and uh, um, using BGP to identify those routes and to uh, uh, create the uh, connected uh, the routing table through those uh, connected VPNs. So it supports the use of existing protocols and uh, deployed infrastructures and existing all the uh, uh, provider edge devices with current capabilities on the, uh, today's network. And uh, so BGP is used and for the, uh, the, uh, the route advertising and the NetConf YAN or the XMPP, the uh, uh, existing infrastructure can be used for configuring um, the, uh, uh, from the controllers and to the uh, virtual routers and uh, uh, create and configure um, the routers, the set up the uh, 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 route targets and uh, uh, install the routes into the service uh, functions. 
and it supports both the physical and the virtual deployments in the, in the existing infrastructure, and it supports multiple uh, control plan protocols, and including the L3 VPN and the EVPN and uh, the uh, layer three functions in the EVPN, and also the uh, multiple data plan and in, in, in encapsulations. For example, that supports MPS over GRE or the uh, VXLAM and uh, uh, different encapsulation methods. Um, here is a simple diagram and uh, um, describes the uh, the chains that's based on the uh, MPS BGP VPN method. So basically, the, I can see that the um, there is the controller, right, and that's being um, responsible and for uh, creating and building the uh, service function chain topologies, including different service functions, number of the instances, and there's a whole connectivity on the overlay networks. And also, it's a, a responsible for, for uh, creating the um, uh, virtual routers and uh, for um, different service functions and in the uh, routing system that the uh, service function connected in the chain. And so in the, uh, each of the routing systems, it needs to create the uh, ingress, the uh, route and egress router, and also connect, uh, create the uh, interface that connect to the different service functions, right? And initially, it, it needs to install the uh, static route and uh, basically the, uh, the next hop will be pointed to the interface connected to the uh, service function and uh, the uh, destination, um, the uh, prefix will be destination, the prefix of the destination address and for the next hop. And uh, also the, uh, you can see um, for the uh, ingress and egress um, hop on the next connected, logically connected uh, service function and then needs to use the same um, routing targets, right? And uh, um, the same route target will ensure that when you advertise the routes from the uh, ingress, the uh, 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 VRF to the egress VRF, they will get a match, and uh, um, and the uh, egress VRF will install the uh, uh, the next hop and based on the uh, uh, route advertisement. Okay, and uh, so and in the uh, route advertisement, and you can see that it will um, give the uh, next route, and it will be the IP address of the ingress the VRF. And it will also an advise information of the tunneling and capabilities that will be supported in the next hop. For example, it could be um, MPS over GRE typically or the VXLAN. And, uh, and also it will advertise the uh, MPLS, the labels, which identifies a, uh, the interface that's connected to the uh, service functions. So in this case, when the uh, packets arrive to the ingress and write it just to uh, uh, decapsulate the packets and based on MPS the labels, it will switch to the uh, service functions. So it improve the performance and uh, make it work a, uh, in, in a faster way. And as you can see, and for the controllers that interacts with the virtual routers, right, it will be using the existing um, uh, functions in the configurations. For example, NetConf YAM and with those virtual routers, or um, using X, uh, XMPP for the existing routers, or the, uh, uh, NetConf YAM for the uh, edge routers. And of course, BGP will be used for the, uh, uh, the route advertisement and using the R, the uh, route uh, uh, reflector, and to advertise the uh, routes and uh, between the different the, uh, virtual routers. And of course, the uh, load balancing and could be used right to balance the uh, different uh, instance of the functions. Um, so that's the L3 approach, and uh, based on the existing the network functions and to, to create the service function chains. And uh, there's a new approach and very innovative, and that's called NSH, the network service header approach, and which basically focus on the uh, virtualized the uh, service function deployment, and everything is based on virtualized the deployment on the uh, um, overlay, and uh, the encapsulation is based on NSH that's added the uh, network service header, and the tunneling is based on the uh, VXLAN GPE and for the layer three and the GRE or the Ethernet, and uh, so VM is attached to the uh, OVS in the layer two and uh, assumes a proper setup is available and they need to uh, be supported. And in the OVS, I think there's a patch in the OVS already being uh, applied to support that. And the multiple um, tunneling protocol can also be applied, right, in addition to the VXLAN GP, et cetera. And they need the uh, classifier, and it's called flow-based classifications. That's needed for flexible uh, uh, classification criteria. For example, classifier usually is using GBP, the uh, group-based policy as a classifier for that. And uh, um, so that's a similar um, diagram, and you can see the, uh, from conceptually and uh, architecturally, it's similar to the uh, uh, MPS uh, BGP VPN approach, and of course with a different the encapsulation method and with different the way to construct the, uh, the surface function, the, uh, the chains, the path, and uh, um, also the, uh, it's based on the L2, mostly based on L2. 
and uh, um, the pa different package headers. And uh, um, so you still have a control plane function, right? And to install and uh, um, uh, uh, encapsulate those packets in at the beginning. And then need the uh, classifier and uh, determine the uh, traffic flow and uh, um, the forward uh, the city inputting, which is similarly to the uh, virtual router, but it's a uh, it's OVS based the uh, uh, the router on uh, layer two. And so it also considers some legacy service functions, which may not support the uh, NSH service function headers. So it introduced concept of the SF proxy. And uh, so basically, it de uh, decapsulates the uh, uh, NSH, the encapsulations, right, and uh, forward the traffic to the uh, service legacy service functions. And once it's finished, and it will re-encapsulate the headers and with NSH headers and back to the service forward and, uh, and so on and so forth. And so the traffic will flow the whole chain until it reaches the, uh, the end of the chain. And as you can see, um, there are different functions, right, and all actions that's been defined um, in the uh, the whole path, including the insert the uh, header, remove the header, select the uh, service function path, decrement service index, and update the container header, etc. And the different the entities in the uh, uh, in the path will perform uh, different functions. As summarized in this table. So that's the um, how the service header is defined, and. Um, yeah, so they have a base, the uh, uh, header, and uh, they have service path uh, header, and they have the cost, uh, content headers with all the different metadata. And, uh, and uh, one um, very important feature of this method is the uh, metadata that's been uh, uh, added or, uh, uh, in the uh, different service folder and so that the, uh, you can have the more context-based information to allow for extending to the uh, new services, and which is very powerful and in this method. Okay, and uh, so that's the uh, brief summary, and uh, now I hand over to Tim, and uh, he will give the uh, demonstration about the, uh, what's been uh, implemented. I, can, I got this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ben. Uh, good morning, everyone. So my name is Tim Rose. I work for Red Hat, and I mainly focus on upstream projects like OPNFV and OpenStack and Open Daylight. Um, if you're not familiar, if you've heard OPNFV, but you're not familiar with what it actually is, it's an integration project where we take different NFV features like service function chaining or SDN VPN and different SDN controllers like Open Daylight, Onos, Contrail, and try and integrate that into OpenStack. Um, and so in OPNFV, there's a sub-project called Service Function Chaining Project where we wanted to take Open Daylight SFC and be able to integrate that into OpenStack. And so to do that, um, we kind of came up with this proof of concept demo that we threw together. Um, and in order to integrate into OpenStack, we had to have an entry point into OpenStack that could actually create service function chains and talk to Open Daylight. And so we looked around OpenStack and found Tacker. And Tacker is a VNF manager project in OpenStack that's Etsy Mano compliant. And we decided that Tacker gave us enough information about describing what a VNF actually is so that we could implement service function chaining to get properties of that VNF um, that we need to be able to create a service function chain. So a VNF description um, in Tacker contains attributes like what type of service it is, so if it's a firewall or a NAT. Um, it can have properties like is this service function NSH aware, what encapsulation type is it using, like VXLAN, GPE, or Ethernet with NSH. Um, and so we decided to go with Tacker and implement the service function chaining plugin and extension into Tacker to be able to, to orchestrate this proof of concept. Um, we're obviously using the Open Daylight SDN controller with service function chaining features loaded. Um, for this demo, we're using OVSDB NetVert features to drive um, Neutron network creation into OpenFlow down into OVS. And then we're also using a NetVert SFC feature, which allows us to create a service function chaining classifier. So we need to classify tenant traffic onto that chain. Um, we're doing all this on the OPNFV Apex installer platform. So in OPNFV, there's a bunch of different installers. We're using the Apex installer for, for this demo. Um, it's a triple O based installer. And then we're using Open vSwitch that's custom built with NSH patches from upstream. So currently in OVS, there is no official support for NSH. So we have some patches upstream that we've built a custom OVS version for this demo. And so I, I mentioned that everything is running on the Apex installer. And in the demo, I'm going to do a live demo in a little bit to show um, traffic going through a service function chain, but the deployment 
Um, it's triple O based, and if you haven't heard of triple O, it's installing OpenStack on OpenStack. So you're actually, it's a little weird at first, but you're using OpenStack to install your OpenStack. So um, in, in this case, they have the concept of an undercloud and an overcloud. And an overcloud is your target system. That's what you're actually interested in installing. So that's going to have the Tacker Open Daylight um, custom OVS install on it. But you use the undercloud, which is an, a VM. You can just picture it as the installer VM to install that overcloud. And so for this demo, we're going to have a single controller node and a single compute node. Um, and so that's just kind of, you'll see it when I run the demo, you'll see that there's the undercloud that we'll log into and then we'll go into the overcloud. So just good to have that background. Um, for attacker creating service function chains, how, how do we, what's the workflow and how do we integrate this proof of concept? Um, so these first three items here, creating a VNF descriptor, a VNFD, creating a VNF instance from that VNFD. Um, attacker VNF manager uses Heat or Nova backends to actually create that VNF. Um, instance. And so those first three things are already in Tacker. We didn't add any code to do that. So Tacker is already great at managing a VNF. Um, the VNF descriptor itself is a, is a Tosca template, so it's a YAML file that describes what a VNF actually is. I mentioned you can, you can define in there the service type, if it's NSH aware, those types of things. It does a lot more than that. It can do a monitoring policy to make sure that the VNF is still up. It can have auto scaling and auto healing properties. Um, and so those first three items, as I mentioned, are already done by Tacker. The following items after that are the pieces that we added. So in Tacker right now, there's this VNF manager extension, and we've added a service function chaining and classifier extension next to that that's able to talk to the VNF manager. And so in addition, we've added, you can see step four here is create the chain with CLI. We've added the Tacker client CLI to be able to say SFC create or SFC classifier create to create chains or classifiers. So your step four here is you invoke regular Tacker um, client um, CLI to be able to create the service function chain. Uh, step five is it goes into a um, REST call down into Open Daylight. So we have uh, in Tacker an Open Daylight driver that's able to talk REST to Open Daylight SFC and say, create me a chain, um, create an RSP. And an RSP in Open Daylight terms is the rendered service path. So that's what actually gets pushes flows down into OVS. And so um, in the demo, we don't specify a certain SPI or a service path ID. So when we don't do that, Open Daylight automatically gives us one back that's dynamically generated. So you'll be able to see Open Daylight after we create the rendered service path that will give us back that ID. Um, step six is then we create a classifier using CLI. And so that talks to a different Netvert SFC driver, which then will talk to Netvert SFC and say, create this classifier, and the classifier is really an access list that says match on this different tenant traffic and put it onto this RSP, or this rendered service path. Um, that also pushes the classifier flows into OVS so that our traffic can actually match on that and get punted up to the, the service function chain. And so this is just kind of an architectural overview of what we just talked about. The numbers there correspond to those different pieces of the workflow on the previous slide. Um, but you can see up at the top, there's Tacker on the left-hand side. It has its VNF manager extension. On the right-hand side is the service function chain and classifier extension and plugin. It's using its own database. It has its own drivers to talk to SFC and Netver SFC. Um, so step one here is you come up with these VNFD template YAML files, these Tosca inputs to define what a VNF is. You import that into Tacker. Tacker puts it into a catalog. And you say, create a VNF of this description of this profile. And so then that makes a call to a heat driver. Heat then calls Nova and places that VNF onto the compute node. We have a separate, we have one compute node and one control node in this situation. Um, and so for this demo, the compute node there, that's an actual accurate representation of what the demo is going to be. So we're going to have one VNF that's a virtual firewall. Um, and we have an HTTP client and HTTP server. So we're going to use the HTTP client to send crow requests to the HTTP server and see if traffic actually goes through the chain or not. Um, and then on the other side of that, you have the SFC driver talking to ODL SFC to create the chain, and then the Netver SFC driver talking to Netver SFC to create the classifier. And so now we'll go and try to do the live demo here. And so, let's see. So I'm running this all on a single host server. And so we had talked about the undercloud and the overcloud. In this instance, 
hope you guys can see that in the back. The Instack machine there is actually our undercloud VM. So that undercloud VM has installed these other two bare metal BR VM machines. Um, so one of those is our controller, one of those is our compute. So if we log into the undercloud, I switch to the stack user and source his credentials. You can actually see this is from the undercloud's perspective, right? So the undercloud has installed this controller and this compute node. And so by that token, I can SSH into, those, into these control and compute nodes. I've already done that down here. So I'll get rid of this guy. And if we go and we look at our controller, I can do a Nova list here. And you can see there's an HTTP client, HTTP server. Now, now we're on the overcloud. So we were on the undercloud, now we're on the overcloud. This is our client, our server, and our attacker VM. So that long, weird UID down there is attacker VM. And so if we go over here, this tab right here is my compute node. And I can dump out um, all the flows on VRN. So Open Daylight has, with OVSDB Network, has installed the regular tenant flows to be able to allow the client and the server to talk to each other. Um, but if we, if we grep on NSH, you'll see there's no NSH flows here at all. So there's no service function chain set up. And I can also go into the controller, and I can do attacker SFC list. And you get nothing because there's no service function chain created. But if I do attacker VNF list, you can see that there's a test VNF1 there, which is our virtual firewall, right? And so for the purpose of the demo, it's not really a firewall. It's, it's a VM that's running a Python script, which will take an NSH packet, decrement the header appropriately, and send it back out. So we'll be able to see that, because if you look up here, I have um, the NoVNC console set up. So let's see. I might have to re-log it back in. So this, on this left-hand side, this NoVNC console is actually a, just a simple Python HTTP server. So I'll kill that and restart it so you can see. So I'm just running an HTTP server there on port 80, right? And then on this other window, this is actually our VNF. So remember that weird UID for the instance. Um, this is actually our console to our VNF. And so it's important to see here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this packet 673 up here. So that was the last packet from when I was trial running the demo that the VNF received, right? So if, we, if a packet comes to that VNF, we're going to see it pop up here. And so now if I go over to my HTTP client and I curl for that server address, you can see there's no, nothing hitting the VNF. If we look at the HTTP server itself, you can see that it's actually getting hit. It's getting a response back. And so we have no service function chain right now. And so what we can do is we can go on the, class, on the, on the controller and do attacker SFC create Create name, my chain, um, chain, test, VNF1. And now you'll see that down here there's some output. It says pending create. You can see the instance ID there is path, my chain, path 394. So I'd mentioned that we didn't specify a specific SPI or, or service path identifier. So Open Daylight generated one and gave it back to us. So that's our instance ID we're getting back from Open Daylight. So if I do attacker SFC list here, you can see that the status is active, the driver is open daylight, and there's another attribute here, symmetrical false. So symmetrical is, um, you can set that to true if you want to. What that will do is when you make that curl request to that HTTP server and it goes through your chain, the return traffic, if you define the chain as symmetrical, the return traffic will flow back in the reverse order through that chain. If you don't, it'll flow back just like normal tenant traffic. And so now if we go over to our compute node, and we dump flows again and grep for NSH, you can see there's NSH flows here now. Um, so we've, cr we've created the chain in OVS, essentially, by talking to Open Daylight with Tacker. And so now, if we go and we curl again, you'll see the curls are coming back. There's nothing going through the VNF because we don't have a classifier yet. So this command's a little long, so I'm just going to use one from history. Um, yeah, so in this classifier create command, you see we're making name my class onto my chain, which is the chain we just created. We're matching on source port 2005 and desk port 80 and protocol TCP. 
So that should be enough to classify the traffic from our HTTP client and force it to go through the service function chain. So I'll go ahead and create that. So you can see it says pending create. Here's the match criteria up here, which is what we just talked about. Um, and then the infra driver here is netvert SFC. And so if I go and look at OVS now, I can grep on the TP dest. So looking for port 80 there, and you can see there's a classifier flow here now for port 80. So you can see there's no packets that have hit it. Um, it's the first action here is to move the tunnel ID into the NSH context header. And so that allows us to preserve the tenant traffic after it gets through the chain. So when tenant traffic goes, if you, have, if you picture you have a bunch of different tenants with different traffic being classified onto a chain, how do you know when you get to the end of that chain where that traffic should go? So we store the tunnel ID, which gives us the tenant network information so that once we egress out of the chain, we know where to put that packet back onto its tenant network. And so now, if we go back to our HTTP client, now that we have that, and we curl again, you can see over here packets are hitting this, this VNF. So I don't know if you guys can see it in the back, but it's incrementing the packet there. Um, you can see that it says NSH base NSP 394, which if you remember was the exact same ID that Open Daylight gave us back for the service path identifier um, in when we did the tacker show command. And so you can see here the NSI, which is the service index, is 255. And so what the service function will do is it will decrement that SI and send the packet back out. And so you can see here we got the curl request back. Um, sometimes this can be a little slow because we're running nested vert with QEMU and this Python script is not particularly fast, but it worked. And if we go and look at the compute node, we can see that if we grep on TP dest 80, we can see there's 19 packets there that hit that rule. Um, and if we grep on NSH, you can see that there's also 19 packets there that hit the NSH flows. So our, our service function chain worked, right? And so that's just kind of a proof of concept demo to show how we can do service function chaining with OpenStack using IETF, SFC, NSH. So if we go back to the slides now, um, the next question is, after doing a POC demo like this, how do we get this upstream? So we talked to the TACR folks and the Neutron folks, and we tried to figure out how can we get some of this work upstream into the respective projects. And so Neutron already has a networking SFC extension um, and a project, and that networking SFC project is supposed to solve this problem, right, to be able to do service function chaining. They don't do NSH right now because it's not officially supported in OVS, but they're moving in that direction. So we felt like if making this a proper solution that the service function chaining piece and classification piece should actually be handled in Neutron by networking SFC. So we wouldn't be making calls from TAC or directly to Open Daylight. We'd be going through Neutron in, in a proper flow um, down into networking ODL and talking to Neutron Northbound and Open Daylight. And so then that left us with, well, what value then does TACR bring, right? Because for service function chaining, you have to know properties about the VNF. And so in the Etsy Mano doc, I mentioned that TACR was Etsy Mano compliant. They have the, the conception of VNF management and then network service orchestration and management. And so a piece of network service orchestration is doing a VNFFG, which is a VNF forwarding graph. So if you picture a bunch of VNFs all connected together uh, with different paths through the graph, um, that's what a VNFFG is. And there's also a Tosca definition in YAML format to do this, this exact same thing. So we felt like it's much more proper and correct to be able to create a VNFFG descriptor. So these first three items here are the exact same. We create a descriptor using a YAML template um, that's already, it's, it's already specified in Tosca. We then have a VNFFG plugin and extension that processes that input. So when you instantiate a VNFFG, it figures out um, what service function chains to create by making calls down into Neutron to say, create these different service function chains and these different classifiers. And that allows you to do some different things. Um, it allows the VNFFG to figure out common service function chains or common paths through the graph to be able to optimize service function chain creation. So for this first iteration in Newton, um, we won't have anything like that, but it's just down the road, there can be chain optimization there. Um, it can choose, you can have algorithms to choose what VNFs to use in your, in your forwarding graph. So you could say, is this VNF overwhelmed? Does it have too much stress on it? I should use this other one instead. Um, or should I choose a VNF based on how many nodes it can scale? So how many instances can it load balance across? Um, so that's kind of the value that putting the VNFFG there into TACR makes it Etsy compliant and then it, it has a proper flow into Neutron. So this is that same 
diagram is that, well, it's not the same diagram, it's modified, but it's the exact same workflow we just talked about as we showed previously with the demo. So you have here, the first steps are the same. You have the VNFFG descriptor, which is a YAML template. You feed that into the VNFFG, stores it as a catalog. You then say, create a VNFFG. That makes a call into Neutron and Networking SFC driver to say, create a chain. Networking SFC then has drivers to talk to Open Daylight. Um, and so that's what we're planning to do for Newton with Tacker and um, Neutron and the Networking SFC project. And so with that, I'll turn it back over to Ben um, to talk about summary between MPLS, BGP, VPN, and NSH and go over some of the projects. So. Thank you, team. Thanks. That's a great demo, and uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed it. And uh, so in the last few minutes, I uh, just give a little bit of summary and about the uh, different approaches. And uh, so that's a summary table about the uh, BGP VPN the approach and the NSH approach. And as you can see that uh, um, they have the, uh, 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 some similarity and uh, some differences, right? And uh, for example, the classify is required in the uh, NSH approach, but not required for the uh, BGP VPN. It's destination based to the chain. And, uh, um, one is for the L2, the other one is for L3, and uh, one is for the virtual deployment, the other one is for the, both the physical and the virtual deployment. So, um, so that's a kind of a, a very brief summary about the uh, approaches. And uh, as the team and uh, introducing the demo, and a lot of different projects have been involved in implementing this, the uh, uh, SFC, as well as there are some other projects that's been um, will be beneficial in the uh, being. Uh, will be or, or could be benefit and to um, create the uh, uh, service function in the different the uh, type of implementations, and uh, for example here on the OpenStack there are um, uh, different projects including the neutral MPS VPN the uh, as a service projects which basically provide APIs to create and delete listing the different the uh, VPN services in the VPN access the uh, uh, services. And uh, there is another project called the uh, Neutron Above Surface Function Chaining, and which the team also just mentioned, and will be used for the uh, next step, right, and uh, uh, that upstream, and which basically uh, 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 defines the uh, uh, two different concepts, right, the port chain concept, which is order list of the chain itself, and also the flow uh, classifier, which basically is the classification for functions, and also provides different APIs and to create a chain. And uh, um, also there is the uh, MPS, the uh, VPN extensions for the uh, uh, BGP VPN extensions for neutral networking and which basically provides functions to create the BGP VPN and uh, those APIs and also the TAC project and uh, for the uh, orchestration and uh, bring up the, uh, uh, the VNFs. And also in the open daylight and uh, group based policy can be served as a, a classifier in the service function and chaining projects that's been the uh, uh, back end implementations of the uh, service function itself. And the VPN services also provides APIs to create different type of VPNs including the uh, uh, L3 VPN and L2 VPN. And OVSFDB, the network projects, as the opinion just mentioned, it will be used to implement um, those the uh, virtual functions and also can be used as a classifier in the, in the setup of the uh, function chaining in the, in, in the demo. And uh, in the OPMV, in the basic will primarily focus on integration. And so we have the uh, service um, VNF folding graph and uh, provides the, uh, uh, the uh, graph description and requirement so that it can be implemented in the uh, OpenStack project. And we have a service function chaining project which basically integrates on the back end in, uh, 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 the components from the ODL and uh, um, from the uh, OpenStack, and the API from OpenStack, and also SDM VPN um, projects also do the similar role, but uh, focus on the uh, L3 VPN part. Um, so after we see those the um, um, different projects and different the technologies, and what are key takeaways here? And from the operator perspective, from the telco perspective, right? And we see we're very glad to see that there are different diversified implementations in the, in this space, and it provides all the different type of options and, uh, and which are open for the uh, innovations and for the uh, uh, new services functions in this area. And uh, but not fragmentation. And, uh, uh, diversity means that it's interoperable, it's compatible, and uh, not a silo. And uh, from user end user perspective, and uh, we are more interested in um, first the common APIs that can leverage different the uh, backend uh, implementations, whatever approach it is. Right, you need a common API, common the data model, 
and uh, a method that can support inter-domain or end-to-end -end NSFC use cases across different heterogeneous networks, and which means across the uh, uh, access network, core network, uh, backband, and uh, back core network, and that um, we can have these type of the end-to-end uh, -end function chain. I think that's uh, China Mobile also asked this question in the uh, last presentations. So that's a common goal, and uh, we wanted to see um, all the different type of solutions to solve that. And we also wanted to see a deployment model that can leverage existing network capabilities, right, and to minimize the total cost of ownership. That's very important, and because we don't want to uh, make the uh, existing the investment in the network and today and to be the out of date because we have to serve our own uh, end users, give the users an enhanced user experience and without um, giving, um, interrupting their services. Okay. So that's all for um, the uh, presentation today, and uh, thank you for your attention and uh, questions. Tim, come. <laughs> questions? Yes. yes. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. I'll start with my first observation, then the question. The service function chaining is mainly defining the, the involvement of the VNF in order for a particular traffic, right? It could be multiple VNS, it could be one or two VNS, which will work one after another for the particular traffic coming in. So in that sense, it's, it's a path, yes? You're creating a path by inventing a new header and new encapsulation. That's why you need to modify the OVSDB. That's why you depend on the existing underlay, under, uh, overlay network. So this solution will not going to work without under, uh, overlay network because it, there's this new header right there. None of the top of rack, the spine, all those switches will gonna ident you know see what this is and we're not gonna wear what to do with it. That's why the overlay is must to have. And in reality, how many service function chaining paths that we will be using in the field that we need a new header is another question. So why it's kinda of for me, don't get me wrong, it's kinda of, we are hunting a turkey with an RPG. So why not using another approach to reuse the existing headers to create a path such as in, in Neutron we assign VLAN ID ranges for tenants and some of them are kind of idle mode. You can easily use those, create a on-the-fly VLAN tunnel for those on-the-fly servers paths. Thank you. You want to take it or you want me to take it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if you think about a path, like you were saying, a service function chain can just be, a, you can talk about it as it's a path of VNFs, right? If you have this path of VNFs, the, the beauty of NSH is it preserves integrity from those VNFs, through those VNFs. So if you know that a packet comes into your third or fourth VNF in your path, you know exactly where it came from. You know that it's been hit onto the other parts of that path because you use the service index to be able to decrement and know where you are in the chain. You also know, based on the path ID, which path you're on, so you can preserve, you have more metadata information about the chain than you would if you just sent a packet to each VNF and just set up manual flows to make it go in and out. Um, in addition to that, it helps you distinguish chain traffic from tenant traffic. So if you have, like in the current network NSFC implementation, they're not using NSH, but if you have multiple VNFs on the same OVS node along with side with tenants and traffic comes into OVS, how do you know that that traffic coming out of that VNF belongs to what service function chain? You have to reclassify at every point. So with NSH, you classify once and send it through the chain. Um, to your point of VNFs that are not NSH aware, so that means everyone has to come up with an NSH aware um, protocol or whatever for their VNF that they have to add that to their product. Um, so in NSH, there's the concept of having an NSH proxy so that you don't have to have, you have an OVS, it can be an OVS, it's an NSH proxy, so he reads off the NSH header and strips it off and then he sends the packet to the VNF behind it so that the VNF is able to function as it normally would and the proxy in front of it is able to do the NSH work so that your VNF doesn't have to have NSH awareness. Um, that's kind of the solution why NSH, I guess. So. And I think in addition to that, in the, um, we can also use the uh, BGVPN based approach in the creating the routing table and uh, the uh, connected IO3 VPNs for the different paths and uh, along the chain. So it's, there is different about that diversified the solutions that you can use. So um, forgive my ignorance, just a couple quick questions. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm curious about is uh, how SFC, SFC chains might be load balanced? 
uh, between different applications. I'd like to hear you talk about that just real briefly. Um, and the second situation is um, uh, when I have uh, poten the potential for per user SFC chains, can you talk about that a little bit? So I have a, uh, an application where I have users um, sitting on a VPN and they want to be dropped off into a OPNFV network and then each user is treated differently with their own service function chain. So can you just talk about those two uh, possibilities a little bit? Sure. Uh, let me take it. So the, uh, the load balancer part is, is a problem that we're going to solve later down the road. But how you can do load balancing is, as I mentioned, you can ask. There's, so there's two different ways, right? So you can ask for the VNFFG extension can ask VNF Manager to give me a VNF that's scalable. So you know that it can auto scale to a certain amount depending on load. You can monitor those VNFs that are a part of that chain. So maybe you create a chain that's part of many paths, right? So you, you have many paths to this graph, and maybe the first couple hops are always the same for every path. So you create one common service function chain. And maybe you're worried about those VNFs not being able to scale due to heavy traffic load from certain paths through the graph. So in that respect, um, the VNF manager already has monitoring systems installed to be able to monitor the usage and to be able to scale out VNFs as part of that chain. And so that's kind of my thinking along the lines of being able to load balance the chain. Um, the second part was being able, this, your second question I think was being able to do um, different service function paths based on tenant information. And so in open daylight you can match on tenant ID, you can match on uh, the tenant network, um, different things like that. So you could, you could do that in classification, um, but once the packet gets into the chain, onto its path. It follows the path until it egresses. There's the concept of being able to do more graph choice so that you reclassify inside of a service function. So maybe a service function figures out, oh, this packet is from this tenant. I need to reclassify it to go through a different path. And that's something that um, NSH also provides for, um, but it's something that we haven't thought about solving yet um, in, in this initial implementation. So. And uh, also in the uh, BGVPN approach, and when you do the uh, load balancers, right, and you can install the load balancer in the egress ERF, and so that it can be, um, um, and the, the traffic can be scheduled to the different top of the uh, next hop of the uh, uh, the SFs, or you can have the different instances, and that's connected to the uh, the single the I the ingress VRF, and the ingress VRF can install the load balancer and to um, balance the load to different instances of the uh, 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 service functions. So that's the, uh, how it's be, can be solved in the um, BGP VPN based the uh, service function chains. Okay, this gentleman. Hi, good morning, thank you. Uh, uh, I have a, a couple questions, or uh, really just one major question. What is the strategy for, in the NSH approach, to deal with path MTU discovery for the applications? Like what, who, is it something that's kind of, kind of be set? You know, is the NSH header like expandable in size? How does that affect the, the, you know, the path MTU that the end applications experience. And if it's path MTU discovery, who's going to, who, who, what component of the NFV infrastructure would kind of be responsible for that? Or is it everyone kind of for themselves? Uh, at this point, it's kind of everyone for themselves. So we have, um, you have the NSH header, and then you're going to have some type of encapsulation header, because NSH isn't a transport header. You need something on top of it to transport the packet and the overlay, right? So mm -hmm. you're going to have additional header um, bytes there. Mm -hmm. And so modifying the MTU based on that, um, that's not something that I've thought about at least for now. So okay. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it's, I mean, it's a very common problem in like a non-virtual environment in an MPLS backbone WAN just, you know, and especially if the, um, the, the VNF itself might be a third party, like we don't really, like the NFVI owner doesn't really own that. It's a partner providing that processing. Like how do you enforce them to do something, mm -hmm. you know, what are your, whose customer is it? So, I don't know, I just see that sounds, sounds very challenging. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically, so thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool demo, by the way, really, thank oh, you for that. Thanks. Um, so, I mean, at the, SF, the concept of an SFC controller, so basically your CLI when you, when you instantiated that graph, mm -hmm. is, is there anywhere in OP, OPNFV or, or NFV Mano where they're going to standardize kind of where that function is? Is it going to be part of Orchestrator or is it going to be BSS? Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, it's not going to be, so in OPNFV, there's many different solutions, right? We're not going to standardize one way to do service function chaining. And, and you saw the other approach here, alternatively to NSH. Um, for in, 
so in OPNFB, you can do pretty much what you want, the types of solutions you want to do. So if you want to try out this service function chaining POC that we did, you can go download the Apex installer and, and run it on your CentOS 7 machine. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no standardization for it. In, in OpenStack, we're hoping to be able to do this BNFFG Etsy Mano orchestration into Tacker, and then, as I mentioned, Neutron will handle the networking SFC part, the service function chain and create part, and that could have different backend drivers, so it could use OVS or ODL or another SDN controller. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Or? Well, I was looking more northbound. Oh, to, okay. To like oh, to the OSS? Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that, that instantiation of a subscriber clicks on a portal somewhere that says, oh. I want a firewall in my, in my chain now. And does, is that function standardized anywhere? It's just going to be probably some custom software at some point. Yeah, that's not going to be standardized, I don't think. So um, they would have to integrate into Tacker's REST APIs to be able to do yeah. that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and for now, I think it's OPMV and currently it's focused on the infrastructure part, but we are expanding the scope to cover the uh, manual and uh, um, so all the different projects if we see the need from the market. And I'm sure that there will be some projects being proposed to, to solve these problems in this area. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you.